What's going on guys? So today on this double October review, we're gonna be taking a look at the last SD of this year. And it is of course gonna be the new weird SD Gundam World Sengoku Soketsuden. Good lord. Zhao Yun Double O Gundam and Bilong Q? I have no idea how to pronounce any of this. <laughs> uh, I believe in the series, there's no words, there's no spoken words, like an animated comic. Um, there's, there's nothing to let you know how to say any of these words, and it's really, really annoying. And of course, with a title like that, it's kind of ridiculous. Now, that being said, I know nothing about this series. I watched the first couple episodes, so to speak, and got nothing out of it. I quit watching it. It's very interesting new aesthetic for the BB, not BB Senshi, but new SD world that they've got going on. And, of course, Double O being a chunk of that. Of course, it had to have a part of this. A lot of you guys were asking about it. So, here we go. Now, this is, of course, the, the Xiaoyun Double O Gundam. And then his bike is the Bailong Q. Quu. I don't know. It looks, just look how long the name is written out. That's just ridiculous. But on the front cover here, you do have it here in just straight Gundam mode. And there, riding on his dragon motorcycle. If it was painted white, it would definitely be a blue eyes white dragon. That is totally a blue eyes white dragon head. You can quote me on that. It looks like a Kaiba cycle. Let's just be honest. And you got uh, all kinds of other things down here. I guess this is like a symbol of their energy. I think the... Um, the Haro from this thing has that same dragon emblem on its on its body. If I remember correctly, you got Bandai Spirits down there, of course. Now, if we come to the bottom, you got Zhao Yun Double O Gundam right there, the Shunko and Senko swords, and you got Wind Memory. I have no idea what the memories do in this. I don't know if different elemental memories give them different powers or something. I have no clue. And then you got his sword, Senko and Shunko. So the shorter one is Shunko, the longer one is Senko. And you got him there, just doing stuff. Highly detailed form with sections using clear parts. That's mostly true, uh, except for the detail part. And then show images. Some images show the product on Action Base 5, sold separately. That's true. And there he is riding the bike, the Bilong Q. A designated bike is included. Rearranged parts to ride. Memories can be equipped on the console. That's also true. Complete product image has been painted. Yeah, no kidding. And then you come around this side, you got Bandaihoi.net, number seven in the line. And no, I'm definitely not going to be collecting the rest of this line. This was going to be it for me, unless they do more Double O Gundams down the line. Joe Yun Double O Gundam, and Bandai Spirits. And you come around this side, uh, you got the name, and you got all this stuff here. So let's let's do the read-up here, since it is in English. Zhao Yun, double O Gundam, is a young man, a member of the Shu Area's Dragon Watch. Ex excels in spear fighting and riding skills, one of the most powerful warriors of the Dragon's Watch. Long is beloved bike of Zhao Yun, which is extremely high accelerating capabilities, and really is called the, the Bailong, Blue Dragon, due to its iconic colors and explosive acceleration. Nice! That's actually cool. And then you've got the three of them right there. That's pretty cool. You got the warnings right there. Three-year-olds don't like Sengoku Sokutsudens in their eyes. I don't know. And all this stuff here. Polystyrene and got things there. No no uh, price on here because it's Bandai Spirit. It's got the big Gumpla logo, though. Honestly, uh, offhand, I forget how much this was. Somewhere in the 20-ish dollar range, I think. Maybe not quite that expensive. And you've got illustration is by Imashi Susumu. Yay. That's a new artist for me, I think. <sighs> new SD. Box still ends up upside down. And if you guys are new here and you still don't know why the box ends up upside down. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to do something a little bit special here. Um, as kind of previously discussed, this I got one that is a straight build from Thomas Rice or Rodimus 13. And uh, since I had to rearrange the schedule, this was actually originally supposed to be in the week that he his other stuff was featured, but not this time. YouTube time travel. <laughs> That's all I can say. So I'm going to do a comparison between mine and his so that you guys can see the difference between out of the box and... It, if you put some effort into it. That's not an insult to him. That's just 
the straight truth about it. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so it's turn table time. I'm going to start off with mine and then I'll show off the comparisons in the closer looks. But because we're going to do the turntable thing, here we go. Now, this is going to be weird because there's two things on the turntable, but either way, it's still pretty cool. Now, guys, this build is really simple. Like, the bike is slightly more complicated just in some of the mechanisms and stuff of it. But as an SD kit goes, it's nothing special. Now, this is the only one of this line that I'm only interested in strictly because of double october and honestly if just checking out some of his other reviews thomas that is um because he's basically bought into most of the line um it's not bad but it's definitely not good and as you can see i've done a lot a lot of paint work and i'll tell you right now i'm still not anywhere close to some of the details that are supposed to be on this thing um there's a whole lot of paint apps that could have easily been stickers and I would have definitely paid a couple more dollars to get stickers to complete the look of this thing um, that would have saved me some paint work and I just you know that it just got very very annoying by the end of it that I was doing so much paint work so much fine finesse work just to try to get this thing done and frankly just felt like I wasn't getting there and so I finally just reached a point that I just said it's good enough and I can't do much more. So at the end of turntable time and we'll check it out a bit closer. All right, so let's take a look at the Gundam first. Oh boy. So it basically comes in crappy gold, blue, white, and some red. And you've got to do all of the other work, essentially. So... I'm not going to be able to really go over all of the details and stuff like that. It does have some neat molded details, like kind of a dragony crest here on the forehead. And you actually get a little red mouthpiece that goes in there. And it's, I mean, it has some nice molded details and stuff, but you really have to bring out a lot of it with some paint. Like everything you see that's green, with the exception of the eyes, is all painted. It does have stickers for some. Actually, I take it right back. That part right there is also a sticker because there's no way to paint that really well. Um, and you can tell all of the gold work I've done with paint that is just Tamiya gold sprayed as much as I could and then hand painted the rest. So any of the small details are all hand painted, like here on the shoulders, there on the chest, the cape areas here on the shoulders. All of that was hand painted, which was a huge pain. And this back cape. And I'm going to complain about it right now. This is supposed to match these. So all of the center is supposed to be blue to match these. So unless you're going to paint over all of your translucent parts, you're never going to get that. I even got some gold paint back here to try to simulate what the backpack looked like. It looks terrible. And so does the back of the head back here. But all is supposed to have green and gold. And would have been perfect for the sticker game that didn't happen you also got some parts here that you can see where i missed paint because that's where the clips were he does have this nice translucent blue uh kind of hair coming out of his helmet also that would have been perfectly fine not being translucent i think that would look pretty cool painted like a sky blue same thing with his energy capes now it probably doesn't go with his weird wind theme or whatever but you know it is what it is and you can see down here on the crotch that I got this green area right through here. There's supposed to be blue and other stuff all thrown in there. I think maybe even some red. I could be wrong. Painted as much of that as I can. Now, this is the Tamiya Metallic Green Spray Paint. And I just, anything I couldn't spray directly, I brushed on by spraying into a can and then, you know, doing it that way. Even, so, even inside the ears here, which I believe came with a sticker. But once again, I generally don't do that if I don't have to. But these little parts here on the shoulders, same deal. Now, the actual bike came with a buttload of stickers, but we'll look at that here in a little bit. What I want to do is compare the stock version, the out-of-the-box version, versus this. So, this is going to be... And this is Thomas's. 
so you guys can really see the massive, massive difference of paint apps that are missing versus stickers and stuff like that are missing. Now, he did what he could to paint a line in some extra details. He used the brown on the gold, which is fine, um, but definitely missing so much of the detail work that could be done. Like the GN drives are supposed to have all that gold, all that green. Well, there's a couple spots that I added green that didn't need it. That was, that was my bad. But you can see here the clear basic parts here that needed to be the gold filigree kind of stuff going on. And just looking at the bare crotch armor there, how big of a difference it makes versus what it should look like. That's the scary part. Though I thought there was a green sticker for this part. I don't know if he missed it. I could be wrong. Um, and then, like, say the back of the head here. You can see, mine is closer to how it should look. Also, my gold paint was getting a little thin at that point, so it looked like crap. But I also stopped caring around about that point. So, he's supposed to have all that green extra parts coming out the back of his head. This is what it looks like plain. There's what the backpack looks like plain. So... That's that's the difference in painting. Now, this gold, the bright gold plastic, isn't terrible, but it's not good. And it's bad, especially with the fact that it's missing so many other paint apps. Now, there's no difference in the weapons, so he's got his two different sword slash spears, the Senko and the Shunko. And it is, now I'm going to put these in his hands here i think i have them backwards i don't care they are square pegs that have to go into the square hole of the hand and sometimes it's a super tight fit like that one that was a super tight fit and then it doesn't stand up very well one thing about these sd kits they're they're a lot like the old bb Senshi line ball joint uh joints <laughs> ball joints uh so sometimes they're not the best. And the feet don't ever sit flat unless they're directly under him. And he's slightly back heavy. And so we'll do this. Okay, that was my fault. I knocked that over. And it sounds like they're back to doing work upstairs after being done for long enough for me to get started on this. So there's your two Gundams side by side. One stock, one not. Now, real quick, I'll go over articulation. The head is just on a big old ball joint. No biggie. Doesn't do anything special. The shoulders are little ball joint swivels inside the arm. And the arms themselves are ball joint up into there. I keep knocking them off. In fact, I knocked the ones off of Thomas's twice. So he can shrug decently. That actually almost matches up, like right there. I wasn't even looking at the camera for that. Okay, so, and it can, it can move around decently, but a very basic uh, BB Cinchy style ball joint arms. Hands are just in there on a small ball joint. No big deal there. Torso rotates only at the hip, like the actual body doesn't have anything above that. Just the ball joint. And then he actually does have moving knees, which is interesting. He does have slightly pivoting feet, but once again, they're not great. So they'll stand flat, but not good. Not super well, but well enough, I guess. And the backpack, the arms here are mounted on ball joints. And then there's some swivels up here. And then the actual thing can turn. And then the capes also are on a small ball joint in that little area. So those can all move and pose and stuff like that. So if you really want them to be like his stuff is kind of blowing in the wind. Wind. You can do that. You can have his capes sort of flowing which is fine oh by the way he does have the wind memory little tr clear translucent bit that does plug into his back i don't understand the point of that actually this reminds me of the uh the battery packs from exo squad if you know what i'm talking about so all right so that's enough about the gundam let's look at his motorcycle All right, so there is the Bailong Q or Bilong Q, whichever way it is. So the Blue Dragon motorcycle, and this is mine, and it has been painted. Everything but the blue is painted. So 
the green stripes everywhere which by the way i had to keep determining it had more and more stripes i kept missing bits of it so things that don't give you a sticker for any of this up here i do believe they give you a sticker for here and here they also give you the stickers to go on the inside of the wheels they also give you a ring sticker that goes there now i'm telling you all that when i can show you that here in a second but i wanted to show off what this should look like or at least a very close approximation to what it should look like especially with the nice matte black tires which was a huge pain to mask because these are completely molded in place these are not separate wheels which would have been a huge awesome thing to have so these parts of course sandwich from the outside so you can access a good chunk of the wheel but you're also ac accessing only half of the wheels so you got to paint them all individually or partially assemble it which also considering how all this is you can even see here we're at a masking incident and that black goes all the way up to there and frankly don't care and i have another little mishap here but i can scrape that off if i'm really upset about it see it just comes off pretty easy so, I mean, I did what I could, and there's a couple mishaps here and there, but not enough to, you know, shake a stick at. And then I even did the little console there, which also needed some color, but I did mine just slightly different than the actual image showed, but nothing, you know, ridiculous. I'm going to put the wind memory in there for reasons I don't actually know. So, and it does have one ability, it does get longer. So when it's non-Gundam usage, it's shrinky. When the Gundam's on it, you need a little more room, you extend it. And it does have this little piece here that only works when the Gundam is on it. So there's kind of no point to that. So without further ado, we'll look at the stock out-of-the-box version. <sighs> Sorry, it had cat hair on it. That's what it looks like out of the box with all the stickers applied. So once again, I was pointing out the fact it's missing things, like the dragon eye, like the little horns right there. Okay, so I was wrong. This doesn't get a sticker. That does. Then you got the one that goes around the wheel. Now, of course, the metallic green sticker looks fantastic. But one thing they don't do is give you enough of them. You know, this entire surface of the inner part of the wheel here is supposed to be green. The fact that the entire tire is supposed to be black. Like, why couldn't they just give you that, you know? And, you know, I get that it's an SD and they're really not trying, but come on, Bandai, that was just lazy. Now, you do get a plug down here so you can totally mount this thing on a stand if you want. You also get a molded in radiator, I didn't point that out, but it's back there. And then if you want to see the console without any paint, there's that. Now, guys, of course, I'm not trying to insult uh, Thomas in any way. This is me showing the difference between what you get if you just go by the box and only what they give you and then of course panel lining versus how it's supposed to look give going by the box and the way it's supposed to look now one thing that i do like better on the regular version is that the green line here is actually super tight and small i well overdid it on mine um but i had no way to mask that off um in such a way now, that would have been fine if I, like, say, painted the whole thing green, used that as a masking sticker, peeled, or then painted it blue over it, then that would have worked. That would have totally made sense. But you can see, you know, just a huge, huge difference in, in just doing it. And, of course, there's mounting points for stuff all over this. There's holes everywhere on this guy. So, you know, they want you to be able to kind of have some playability with other stuff. So, for instance... You can mount the weapons on it. I'll just use his for the example. So they have little pegs on the on the swords or spears or whatever. You can plug them in however you see fit. Well, wherever they will fit, I should say. And you do have these little slotted holes. So you can actually slide them in like a holster. That's pretty neat. You can slide them in up front. That's the way actually I prefer to do it. Um, I like doing it like so. Thomas actually had them this way. Sideways. I don't know if that's proper. I don't, I mean, there's no real proper way to do it, but I don't know in the instructions. I didn't pay that much attention if I'm honest. 
Um, I like them vertical. I mean, you can do them horizontal. It honestly doesn't matter. And once again, you do have the ability to shunk it up and down. It does have extra holes and stuff on the inside. So I'm guessing for some of the other bikes, they use a very similar setup for like the frame of the bike, so to speak. But because this one is a Blue Dragon, it mostly has the Blue Dragon style head area that's all plugged in right here. Um, which, you know, just removes like that and then it's got another head, so to speak, underneath it. So they all had bikes, so each one would have a different one. So, I mean, that's basically what you get in that aspect. And, um, yeah, I'll move that out of the way. So, of course, you can't have the bike without the rider. By the way, it is more or less sitting flat on its base and then on its back wheel, the front wheel doesn't touch the ground that much. So we need to prep the Gundam to ride the bike. So let's pull the weapons out of his hands. We need to remove the entire backpack assembly, which is easily enough. It is just plugged in. And then we need to pull this little bit off the bike. I'm gonna pull that up and back. Then remove his cape. Cape slash butt skirt. It's kind of both. Butt cape. It's a butt cape. It's a pretty tight fit. On. At least on mine, it's a really tight fit. So what you want to do with this guy is take this. It's obviously designed to go right up in there. And then you plug this in vertically to there. And you want to take the backpack and plug it in to the back of this. Like so. And then it's on this nice collapsing part. So you, you just kind of have to figure out the best way to mount that for yourself. Now we will need a Gundam to be prepped to sit down. He does do that. So you kind of hinge everybody as far forward as you can. He's got this extra hinge up here in the torso. So you want to just bend everybody about as tight as it'll go. I don't even think he kicked the legs forward. So he's got, oops, the part wants to pop out a lot today. I don't know what's going on there. That's weird. I don't know what's going on there. That just doesn't want to stay. Okay, so he's got this little slot back here that goes into the peg on the bike. So he actually does mount to the bike, so to speak. I could have sworn like the body bent more than that. Hold on. That's what I thought. Yeah. It has like an accordion motion. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah. You can bend a little bit more. Can definitely go back so i missed that kind of ab crunch i apologize but it's about as good as it wants to bend we want to tuck the hands forward and i was trying to prep him to sit on the bike now he's being ridiculous okay so let's try that again this time with a little more actually making it happen we want that to plug in on the base and i don't know why it's resisting I guess it doesn't go super far in, just plugs in right there. And then you want the backpack thing to come forward and actually plug in to his back. So now he's connected to the bike in a couple different ways. Now, you, like I said, with the hands, you just kind of pull those forward. Then you can scooch the bike closed, so to speak. So it's sort of holding him better. But there we go. Now he's riding the bike. Ta-da. And it's okay. And like I said before, you can position these like he's riding and he's got them back. You can have them tucked forward as far as you can, you know, make it look cool. Or you can have the GN drives way back here if you want. I mean, you can just sort of play with it. Just, just get it to a spot that you're happy. I like the cape dismounting and mounting on the back like it's actually like separate sort of. It is what it is. Now, it is a very, very silly thing like in general it's a very very silly thing but 
There we go. Now it's going to be off off center a little bit there. All right. And there's the other one for comparison. Yeah, I would definitely not sit these guys near each other. They will definitely have a catastrophic accident here. Now, one thing I just noticed, I think I missed a neck joint. I think there is a separate hinge. Yeah, okay, yeah. I didn't realize that. So there's an extra rocker hinge in the neck. I totally missed that. I, did, I figured it out while I was uh, manipulating his, actually. So there we go. There's your side-by-side -side comparison with one out of the box and one definitely not out of the box. And once again, trying to balance these guys is kind of silly. Come on, stay flat. There we go. So, all right. Let me know which you guys prefer. And if you have this thing, did you paint it to the nines? Do you think they should have done a little bit better with stickers and things like that? They could, in my opinion, Bandai can do better. They have done better. Their BB Senshi line, while sometimes flawed and missing details, usually comes with a ton of stickers to help decorate up the kits. But to me, these new guys really aren't going to be worth the money. Now, I know that for the most part, the regular ones are cheap. Like, they're under 10 bucks or something like that, or just at 10 bucks. And then the motorcycle is like 6 six bucks or something like that. So, I mean, more than likely together, they were less than 20 And I, and I did actually forget, I think I have one other one. I think I have the Providence one uh, that looks like he's all lava and stuff. That's going to be a huge example of a difference between what it should look like out of the box and what it should look like completed because that thing is missing paint apps or sticker apps all over the place oh and i kind of forgot this so let's compare this to other sds so there's the bb senshi exia for size comparison you can see a bit different dimensions but definitely sd styled for sure Oh, by the way, I think his feet are supposed to be white, but I wasn't going to go there. Here it is next to the one that I hate, which actually is far more in line size-wise. Um, and given the details and the way this one moves, is actually this one is very similar to being in between. Some articulation that the BB doesn't have and some articulation that the SDEX doesn't have. And then just for giggles, because it's out here. There it is next to an MG, or at least the shins of an SD. And, oops, stay. In comparison, just for the heck of it, since Wally hasn't been out here all month, there's Wally. But guys, uh, it's up to you whether or not you want this line. This will be really good for kids. There's some playability, stuff like that. They're very simple kits. But if you're like a regular collector, I would avoid these realistically. I don't think they're worth the time and the effort. Um, unless you just really dig putting in a ton of time and effort to make something look about as good as it can. Which, you know, I, I didn't do 100%. I'd say I got to about 85 maybe 90%. It looks good, but even looking at it, I'm like, I can see the stuff that's missing and it bothers me. And I don't think I'll ever go back to add in those extra, extra, extra details that I'm missing. So, I don't know. I, I don't know that I have a good conclusion to this. It's just, it's a line that I'm not super interested in, but because it's a double O thing, and you guys were definitely asking for it, I went ahead and did it. Um, maybe they'll do more in the double O arena, and I might care a little bit more if they do a good job. The fact they went straight double O, not Exia, I kind of appreciate uh, because XC has gotten enough stuff. Let's just be honest here. But uh, that's going to be it, guys. So go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up if you want to help support the channel. Check out the Patreon down below if you want to actually support every month. If you want to just support this month. And uh, hopefully maybe there will be enough sales to help out anything for next year. Which, looking at the recent sales, um, is definitely not going to happen. Uh, check out the Shoki store. You can get all the Double October merch right there at that link so if you want something from the past you want something from current by all means but guys that's gonna be it and i'll catch you on the next review as this week and this month are winding down and remember as always
to keep on building.